So in this episode, we need to take the engine out so I can box up the chassis leg and box up the, the front cross band. But now we were about to do that in the previous video, but uh, that video was quite long already. So we're doing a whole separate video on this. Now, before I take the engine out to box up that chassis leg, we're gonna tackle the water pump. Now, this whole assembly here is pretty chunky and uh, I can already tell you that we're not going to have clearance for the alternator, uh, especially on this factory bracket. Now, if you cut out all this core support, you are going to have room. There is no doubt about it. The only issue is that I'm pretty sure we're going to impede on the mm. just the headlight bolts for these two bolts here on this piece here. So if we have to cut here, it means the headlights not going to fit which on Dave's car is not a problem because this car runs headlight blanks. In fact, this car doesn't even have a switch for the headlights. That's how sort of dedicated a uh, hill climb car this car is. But obviously, I've got you in mind as the customer that will most likely be purchasing this kit for the K20 in your K11, so they need to think ahead. Yeah, so... It's not going to work. And if I just grab the camera here, you can see that we're up against the panel here, the alternator. And as you can see, we're a bit far off from these bolt holes lining up by about an inch. And again, as I said, we can't really cut into that because it's going to interfere with the headlight. And uh, obviously for a road going vehicle, we need headlights. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off this water pump bracket quickly. Okay, so that is the stock water pump assembly off. And uh, I've got a little box of tricks over here. And this is what we've got. We've got a T7 designs water pump plate now this is going to bring the alternator in much closer to the block let's uh, start bolting this to the engine again i'm not using any gaskets or seals at this part of the process nice in fact i'm probably just going to put two bolts in because it's only a dry fit. Okay, so it looks like we might have to get the grinder out. I mean, one thing this bracket has done is that it's lowered the alternator quite a bit to where we'd not, obviously if you remember the alternator was here and now it's all the way down here out of the way, so I've got no problem at all getting a grinder out and giving us some extra clearance here. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful. So yeah, that is Spotty Dog. That is exactly what we needed. Uh, so yeah, we, as you can see, look, and that's copper space there, but I can obviously take a bit more of this out. I'm going to trim just above that, and I could take a bit out an angle here. And then obviously, once the engine's out shortly, I'll come from the backside and I'll uh, I'll do a neater cut here. But yeah, that's spotty dog. Really happy that fits. I mean, obviously, the downside, as I said, is as a customer. This is more likely the way that you're going to have to go. Um, I mean, by all means, you could, of course, make your own bracket to mount it a bit lower. The only issue is, is the headlight clearance and the water pump. I mean, the water pump's not a problem, but unless you mounted the alternator where the aircon pump would go, but I honestly, I think you'd struggle. So I'm gonna call that a win and I'm gonna call that a compromise for putting a K20 in your K11. So now I'm happy that fits. I'm gonna take all that back off the engine stick it back in the box, stick it in the back of the car, and then we're gonna take the engine out. Oh, 
Okay, so this is what we have got to contend with, is that we need to box this chassis leg back up. Now, for whatever reason, the factory engine mount used to sit in this location here, and as you see, it is single skinned. And then from here backwards, where the engine mount wasn't, is all double skinned. So by cutting all of this inner skin and outer skin out, it has made the chassis leg, I mean, can't really do so much of it now. There's no weight of the engine on there, but it did have a bit of flex when you rocked the engine back and forth. So what I'm gonna do, I mean, obviously I'm going to ignore all this rust here because I'm not really a restoration type of guy. Um, and that just really isn't in my sort of skill set to, to cut this out and fix it. It's it, This is a pure track car after all. It's not a road car. Um, it's had loads of things cut out of it whatever i mean you can put you can moan about it in the comments it is what it is so what i'm going to do to put a bit of strength back in the chassis leg is i'm first going to cut a strip of seal and i'm going to weld from here directly backwards to the the back of the chassis leg here and then that's hopefully going to put a, a bit of strength back into that chassis leg by attaching this top piece here back to the chassis leg directly and then we'll come in and put a, a flat piece of steel here directly upwards in line with here and then we'll then finish off with two more sections in these corners here so pretty pretty simple job um shouldn't that take us too long really so what we got is a piece of flat card and what we're going to do is we're going to cut out the appropriate size piece of steel we need to cut out a bit of sheet so we've got there we've got there and we've got there and now we should be able to slide this card all the way to that back edge and we'll cheat here we'll score it along there and there we go that gives us a piece of steel that we need to cut out Note to self, don't wear your road camera while welding because it sets fire, singes all your chin hair and wrecks the muff. Okay, ladies and gentle beans, that is the first part welded in. Now, you can laugh all you want, I am in no way a MIG welder. Um, I do have this lovely little Clark unit down here, only because Artec haven't sent me one of their new fancy MIG welders yet. Um, so yeah, no doubt some of you who will be purchasing this, purchasing this kit will most likely do a better job than I have. So yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy. I've just got to fettle some bits with a grinder, but we're going to jump straight into this next section. We now need to box the rest of this chassis leg in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an imprint of this external shape here with a bit of card. I'll cut that out. And then what I'll do is I'll then extend each piece about an inch so I can put some folds on it and hopefully we can put this panel in as one piece. We're, so we've got to do minimal welding. Now what I've had to do is tape two pieces of card together because one piece wasn't actually long enough to do what it needed to do. So that's the imprint there. 
And then if we get So there's a rough guide anyway. Pick up this out. Ferro scissors. A few days. So let's go cut this out. A bit of sheet steel. Okay, so here we are back at the fabrication table. Now what I want to do is I want to add a one inch lip on this edge, this edge, and this edge. And then we're going to fold that on our on our box pan folder. Okay, let's have a quick test fit. Hey, hey. Hey, look at that. Hey, first time. I'm lying, I had to make some slight adjustments. Uh, but to be fair, it was about 80% of the way there. There was just a bit of material in these corners that was stop it, that was stopping it from sitting flush. But overall, with that look, I'm happy with that. And obviously by the time we've, uh, we've love tapped these edges together for a weld, happy, happy days. I've just uh, drilled a couple of holes in this top section here so that when I do get this welded in I can just put a couple of plug welds in here to tie this panel that we've already put into this one and hopefully that will either make it even stronger than what it is so yeah all that's left to do now is weld this panel in So there we go, couple of hours in and we're done. I'm really happy about it to come out considering that uh, this kind of work really isn't my sort of thing. But uh, yeah, just obviously just got to fettle a couple of edges off and I just need to get in here with a die grinder and just sort of clean this edge up. Um, just because I know there's someone in the comments telling me that I've done an absolutely shit job. Uh, but I'm happy, uh, Dave's happy. As you can see as well, I've done these plug welds in this panel to tie this panel into the first panel that we put in. So this chassis leg now should be plenty strong enough. And uh, just need to order some black paint in from the factors. Unfortunately, it's seven o'clock on a Saturday, so there's no way I'm getting a delivery now. And then we'll get that painted and cleaned down, ready for the eventual engine to go in so all i've got to do now other than tidy up my mess on the floor is we need to turn our attention to this cross beam
Right, so there we go. That's the, the chest leg all painted up. No doubt there's some people in the comments absolutely seething at uh, the paint job that I've done, but it's going to do for the purpose of what we need to do with this car. I mean, the rest of the engine bay does need uh, a good clean down because it is pretty dusty, as you can see. And then, as you've just seen, we've just finished off with boxing in this cross support. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how this has come out. Obviously, I've boxed in this piece here, which is the, the piece that we have cut out to clear the, the sump on the K20. And then I've just put a, a lovely dimple dyed sort of like support plate in here as well. Might as well because it was there, and uh, I do love a dimple dye. But what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to get this powder coated and shot blasted next week. Uh, so that looks all pretty for when the engine is ready to go in. Speaking of which, we have just had the delivery of all the engine parts to build Dave's K20. And the gearbox has gone to uh, a gearbox specialist to have a, a really short final drive put in and an inspection of the gearbox which should hopefully be the next video so we have got that to look forward to but yeah with that being said i'm going to end this portion of the the k20 swapped k11 here this is episode three and this video these videos are serving as a guide so so if you're going to do this conversion using our kit you've sort of like got a a diary and something to look at when it comes to doing your own car so yeah with that being said thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you in episode four which is when we're gonna do all the engine stuff and hopefully we're gonna be able to get the engine fitted back in the car see you in episode four